In tonight's headlines, the Consumer Council receives more than 3,200 complaints related to gymnasium chain physical fitness, with customer claims rising to $113 million. Beijing-based company successfully tests reusable commercial rocket, which can deliver a payload of 21 tons into low Earth orbit. And the UK and US give a strong hint of allowing Ukraine to use long-range weapons to strike targets deep within Russia. Days after gymnasium chain physical fitness shut down temporarily, its one chair branch on Lockett Road reopened today under a new name Healthy, providing complimentary services for physical customers. The staff prohibited our crew from filming this morning, but after an arrangement by the police, media was allowed inside. People who were originally members of physical had to sign a consent form, authorizing the collection of personal information, also stating that healthy was not liable for providing physical's remaining services. This woman refused to sign any documents as the staff did not explain the new terms correctly, adding she was still trying to get her money back. Meanwhile, police and customs officers who were searching both the Wan Chai and Causeway Bay branches collected loads of documents and other evidence. Customs has so far received about 1,500 complaints regarding the fitness chain, involving around 72 million Hong Kong dollars. The total amount has nearly doubled in a day following the arrest of two directors. Separately, the Consumer Council racked up over 3,200 complaints involving more than 113 million Hong Kong dollars. Many people had enrolled with the fitness chain recently, with some packages being bought just one day before the closure announcement. Construction workers employed under the labor importation scheme who had received termination notices at the United Christian Hospital expansion project have now been allowed to return to their jobs. Their unpaid salaries have been settled and the workers will be provided accommodation. Early this morning, the affected batch of workers were transported to the construction site in buses arranged by their employer. However, some faced issues accessing the site, claiming their entry cards had been deactivated. Chu King Kern, vice chairman of the Construction Industry Employees General Union, arrived to address the situation. He explained that the workers' registration documents were previously recorded under a street paper, a temporary identity certificate designation, which did not match their new ID cards, leading to access issues. With the union's help, the workers re-registered their ID cards and resumed their duties. Chu said if the employer did not want them back, they wouldn't go through such lengths to arrange transportation and assist with their ID retrieval. I am confident that the employer will retain them, Chu added. He also warned the Shenzhen-based recruitment agency against representing the employer in dismissing workers and emphasized the union's commitment to ensuring fair treatment. As for the workers' accommodation, he said it will take some time to arrange. Meanwhile, eight workers were dismissed for misconduct, including laziness and smoking on site, with the employer assuring compliance with labor laws regarding compensation. Jeremy Chu, Cable News. Blasting off from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert, Beijing-based commercial space launch provider Landspace successfully tested the Jiuquan 3 reusable rocket after it completed a 10-kilometer vertical takeoff and landing. Performing engine shutdown and restart with precision, the 200-second test flight made a successful soft landing, with guidance and control meeting the expected design specifications. Hailing it as a significant breakthrough in the country's commercial space sector, Landspace said the test marked a crucial step towards realizing low-cost, high-frequency space launches in the future. The dual-stage Jiuquan 3 will use methane and liquid oxygen to produce a combined thrust of 900 tons at liftoff and can put a payload of 21.3 tons into low Earth orbit. Landspace is aiming for a successful maiden flight in 2025.
Paralympian Daniel Chan, who won the silver medal in men's singles WH2 class badminton at the Paris Games, is raising awareness about the significant health challenges faced by athletes in wheelchair badminton. Speaking on a radio show this morning, Chen noted that although new players have joined the wheelchair badminton team, some have struggled with health issues stemming from long training sessions. He described a recent case where a promising athlete who had trained for over a year and was close to competing internationally had to leave the team due to pressure source. Unlike those who are confined to their wheelchairs, I can stand and relieve pressure. However, athletes with spinal issues or those who need to remain seated for long periods face significant risks of developing sores, Chan explained. He highlighted that these sores can lead to painful blisters, inflammation and extended recovery periods, making it difficult for athletes to maintain their training. Despite officially retiring from international competitions, Chan expressed his enthusiasm for participating in the National Paralympic Games next year, which will be held in the Greater Bay Area. He hopes to inspire and support future athletes, promising to share his knowledge with newcomers willing to join the team. Jeremy Zhu, Cable News. The 10th edition of the China International Fair for Trading Services kicked off in Beijing today, spotlighting the latest achievements and trends of global trade and service products. In a congratulatory message, President Xi Jinping said the fair is a vivid portrayal of the high-quality development of China's service industry and pledged to open up the sector to traders from around the world. Themed global services, shared prosperity, the annual fair is simultaneously held at two venues in the capital, featuring nine different categories. The two venues at the China National Convention Center in Shougang Park will feature the latest trends in digitization, artificial intelligence, green development, telecommunications, and supply chain. With an expansion in scale and participation, this year the fair has attracted exhibitors from more than 80 countries and international organizations, and 13 of them are first-time participants to the offline event, including France, Portugal and Nigeria. The new exhibitors are optimistic about the fair's potential to boost their businesses, given the large number of global visitors. I'm very much confident and happy to be here today to participate in this event with a lot of countries and this is our first exhibition in Beijing and we would like to hold more exhibitions like this. This is an opportunity for us to showcase our businesses and also to partner with potential investors for our future cooperation. In addition to exhibits featuring over 200 cutting-edge products such as surgical robots and metaverse technologies, the fair will be an international meeting ground for themed summits business negotiations, promotions, and achievement acknowledgments. The five-day event will conclude next Monday. Quentin Yang, Cable News. President Xi Jinping visited the cities of Lanzhou and Tianshui in Gansu province to promote cultural heritage and economic development in the northwest region. Yesterday in Lanzhou, she visited a residential community where he learned about the local government's measures to improve public services and enhance the well-being of the people. He also inspected a section of the Yellow River to learn about the city's efforts to promote ecological conservation in the Yellow River Basin. Earlier, she also visited the Maiji Shan Grottoes and Fusi Temple in Tianshui to emphasize the protection and preservation of local cultural heritage. At a local apple orchard, he commended the development of the modern specialty food industry in mountainous areas. While visiting the Baoji Bronzeware Museum in Shanxi province, she stressed the importance of developing a sense of reverence and affection for the Chinese civilization, and called for the passing on of China's fine traditional culture from one generation to another. Quentin Yang, Cable News. On a joint visit to Ukraine, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and British Foreign Secretary David Lamy held talks with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in the capital Kyiv as the country's war with Russia stands at a critical juncture. 
a supply of ballistic missiles from Iran to Moscow has changed the dynamics of the conflict, and both visiting foreign ministers stopped short of lifting restrictions on Ukraine to use long-range weapons supplied by the West on key military targets inside Russia. However, Blinken gave his strongest hint yet in the press conference that the decision will be made soon. I'm going to take that discussion back uh, to Washington uh, to uh, brief the president on, on what I heard. I know that, uh, that David's doing the same. And both of our bosses, no doubt, will discuss this when they meet um, later this week, actually on Friday, uh, in Washington. Setting Iran's action as a dangerous escalation, British government sources indicated that a decision had already been made to allow Ukraine to use storm shadow cruise missiles on targets inside Russia, although it is not expected to be publicly announced when British Prime Minister Keir Starmer meets U.S. President Joe Biden in Washington. For months, Ukraine has been seeking permission to hit airfields, missile launches, and command centers deep inside Russian territory. The Kremlin warned that allowing Kiev to deploy long-range Western weapons would deepen what it called the direct involvement of the U.S. and Europe in the war, and would trigger a similar response from Moscow. Though there was no breakthrough yet on the issue, the U.S. and U.K. have collectively pledged nearly 1.5 billion U.S. dollars in additional aid to support Ukraine's humanitarian and energy needs. Anna Chan, Cable News. SAR's Jason Gunawan progressed to the quarterfinals of the Hong Kong Open Badminton Championships. Having defeated world number 11, Kenta Nishimoto of Japan in the previous round, Gunawan was up against Frenchman Crystal Popov at the Hong Kong Coliseum. Hoping for a breakthrough to make it to the last eight of a world tour event, 20-year-old Gunawan was on course, winning the first game 21-16. Popov could not put on much of a resistance in the second game, and Gunawan was through winning 21-9. Two-time Grand Slam champion Li Na has been appointed as the tournament director of the Hong Kong Tennis Open. Li made history as the first Chinese player to win a Grand Slam singles title when she triumphed at the French Open in 2011, followed by her victory at the Australian Open in 2014. The president of the Hong Kong China Tennis Association, Michael Chan, thanked Li for looking over the WTA 250 event, which will be held at Victoria Park in late October, and will feature star players, including former U.S. Open champion Emma Raducanu, Paris Olympics mixed doubles silver medalist Wang Xingyu, and defending Hong Kong Open champion Leila Fernandez of Canada.